Good afternoon. Um, back here, Gross Point. Uh, day number, I have no idea. Um, but just wanted to give you an update what we got. Um, got the pond rocked in, rinsed down. Uh, still got a little bit of edge work to do on one side. But um, just got the stream to do and a uh, small little retaining wall. Um, I'm gonna flip you around, show you what the pond looks like. Oh, here you have it. Pretty nice sized pond, you ask me. You got three watt light down there, three watt that's over there by the skimmer, over there, and then another three watt back bottom side of this shelf here um, all the way across there you got our fish cave came up with the idea of uh, using the flow cell on top of three boulders so they got a way in a way out um, and then just kind of got creative with covering up the flow cell different idea I like it more natural looking as long as the three stones, the three points of contact for the flow cells are the same height, it works out great. Um, I don't advise stepping on it, but you'll learn real quick uh, not to do that. Just got stream, which is up there. We got framing rocks in for first waterfall. It's coming into the pond here. Got the liner laid out. Got some pretty heavy rain, so some water in it right now, but got some boulders here. Got to do a small retaining wall back over here. So that way, none of this dirt comes crashing down, uh, runoff into the fence there. Yeah, it's got some dirt to move, stream to finish rocking in, and uh, this one will be a wrap. Hey, this is Dan with Puts Ponds and Gardens coming to you from Gross Point, Michigan. <laughs> yep, you heard it right, Gross Point, Michigan. We are still on this build. Had a lot of pitfalls on this uh, project boulder deliveries um, just making sure that we stay ahead of the the schedule with the boulder deliveries and you know we're short a couple tons here and there few rocks here and there rain has been coming and kind of dampering our not only our spirits but uh, making a mud mess just on the site so we're gonna we're gonna head out to the backyard. I want to show you um, just what kind of things that the guys are are facing on this project. So one of the challenges that we've had on this job is can't dump anything in the street over here. Can't leave anything overnight in the street. The slope of this driveway, it, maybe it doesn't show up on film, but uh, to dump on this driveway, the boulders would just roll down into the street anyways. We've gotten all of our boulders crated for this project. You can't get that many in a crate, especially not two foot boulders. We have to get rid of the, the crates on a daily basis. We've had as many as, I believe, nine to 10 crates out here of boulders. So this is, and this is the last and final crate, and you can see that it's empty. We've brought bag material in here for the, for the gravel for the pond, the guys have to take all the boulders by hand in our ball cart or in a wheelbarrow. This is just a slight incline here, but coupled with the rain uh, makes it very slippery. We've got a, a new guy on site and you know, this job is, it's a challenge for him. I mean, it's a great one for him to start out with, but we're kind of under the gun because we've got to get this done the homeowner's got some more projects that he wants to get other contractors in here. We have other projects that we've got to get out of this job and we've got to get to their jobs. So it's really playing a number on our on our schedule. So we want to get this one wrapped up. Let's go in the back. Let's see how the crew's been doing. So they've got the tank set up filling up with water. So that way when it is time to fill up the pond, we get some nice clear water in there both these tanks we got about a thousand gallons so on Friday when the guys left this pond had no water in it 
but now you know there was a foot and a half of water in this thing so we're pumping this dirty water out um, the guys are taking some of the soils and they're using them in the back to camouflage and create a slight slope going from the biofalls backwards they're going to reduce this slope from the edge of the stream going to this fence line here Brian is uh, graveling up the stream right now. I can see some light wires. He's got some lights here and going to hit this, this waterfall right here with a light, this waterfall here with a light. Hopefully this one gets pointed so that way it catches the canopy of this tree up above. Just gets some little dancing effects on, on the leaves from down below. So this is a three foot pond. I believe now it is a 14 foot by 16 foot pond at three foot deep. There's a shelf here for water lilies. We've got our signature series skimmer here. A lot of little details, but today will be the last day out on this job. Boom. Right, so the pond is filling up now we put a thousand gallons in from our tanks just finishing up the details Javaris over there the new guy is working hard at moving the topsoil so we can minimize the slopes on these on our waterfall berms just to add a little bit more in through these areas and then behind the biofalls so we don't want to create that volcano effect for a waterfall when the homeowner brings in his landscaper they're not struggling with something that we left for them to deal with. We've got the bio ball bags there. We're gonna empty those into the mesh bag, put a small rock in there to weight them down below water. Bio balls above water do absolutely nothing. We want those to be able to catch water, but more importantly, we want them to be able to house beneficial bacteria, filter out this system. So we did a quick rinse on the stream. We did a quick rinse on the pond. We pumped that dirty water out. You couldn't tell right now, but in a couple days this will clear out. A couple more boulders here and there. Now right here, because our our stream ended up getting up a little bit higher, um, right in through here, we used some of the homeowner's retaining wall stone. We'll separate uh, the two different heights. We don't want water and then entering down into the pond. It'll be a dirty pond. On this side, we don't necessarily need a retaining wall here because any water that does hit there will travel off this way and Brian as always doing his little dance I think it's his happy dance because he's gonna be happy to get the heck out of this job not that it's been a bad job but logistically um, it's been a struggle a little while longer as this pond fills up and we'll get this thing up and running Duke what are you doing Such a happy puppy. What is that? He's what got, is that? You realize if he jumps in there, you're going to be coming back tomorrow to fill this whole thing back in. Because she will not be happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> if I turn that waterfall on right now, you're going to get wet. What is that? Duke, take that out of there. Scott, if your lights aren't pointing in the right direction, it's not our fault. <laughs> oh, is he closing up the program? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He just walked over this one like three times. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. My own drinking fountain. Duke, it's like they made it just for you. Oh, he'll be just laying in it. You like it?
So here is the pond and stream at night. The pond will get much clearer after a couple days. I like it. Well, this is totally clear yesterday. I mean, I can see the bottom. Flooded overnight. All this stuff went in there, so let me know what you think. Should I pump it out? Well, after a couple days post-storm of the pond looking like chocolate milk, I couldn't take it anymore. I emptied it yesterday, hosed down the dirt, refilled it. Already it's much, much clearer. You can almost see the bottom. I added some more plants. The stream looks good. Really happy with it. Pond is looking really good. Absolutely crystal clear. Some fish down in the fish cave. Dude, are you hot? It's a little overheating. <laughs> <laughs>